I've had a few questions about LASIK surgery. Um, so I'm actually, this is going to be a short video. I actually asked the same question on a PRI email forum a couple of years ago, and I just did a search and I found it. And I was asking about LASIK surgery from a PRI perspective. And I remember it had been discussed in class, but I just didn't really understand it. So I'm just going to read three responses from uh, one is an optometrist, another works out in Lincoln, Nebraska at the clinic, and another is a very knowledgeable physical therapist who actually works with the optometrist. So the first was from the, the first response is from a physical therapist who works with a very advanced optometrist. And she said, hey Neil, LASIK is theoretically appropriate if done when someone is in neutral. So their body is, is, is not patterned. No left AIC, right BC, right TMCC, or PEC patterns. They're not extended. They're, they're neutral and probably a little bit state and probably decently stable. However, and this is the wow, this is the however that I've always thought of, most cases of LASIK that walk into our offices were not neutral at the time of surgery. Many of these post LASIK cases, so later on in life, most of these post LASIK cases see a change in vision, which typically recedes back to their former pattern. They usually become myopic again. Uh, myopic is nearsighted, but not to the extent that they were previously. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times people think they get LASIK surgery and it's over and they never have to worry about it again. And that's not the case. And I think I just worked with someone uh, early, uh, late last year that I believe was having that issue. She had had LASIK, but you know, when we were going through these techniques, she just wasn't feeling things properly and her neck would not turn off. And necks are very, when necks are really involved, uh, vision is, is quite often involved also. Okay. The second, uh, the second response was from the optometrist. Most of these patients have near point vision problems. So they're, they, uh, well, let me, let me read it. Most of these patients have near point up close vision problems and are currently working on computers or did large amounts of near work earlier in their lives. So that means maybe they're over 40. So they're, you know, as you get older, your ability to focus up close declines. It doesn't matter whether you're farsighted or nearsighted. I'm farsighted and I've definitely dealt with this. Prescribing the appropriate lenses for near activities, so like computer work and reading, is critical in helping them maintain the refractive status that they are left with following surgery. So uh, they're still going to need help up close, whether they realize it or not. So that's one thing. And, and I know just getting, just getting someone into reading glasses who, who doesn't think they need them, but they do because they're older, just getting them into reading glasses can also uh, help decrease tension greatly in, in, a, in, in someone who needs them. Uh, and then the other response was from someone who works out in Lincoln at the PRI clinic. Uh, LASIK in and of itself isn't bad as long as the rest of the system is in an appropriate position. Position. So when we're stuck in this pattern, our head is turned to the left and our eyes are turned to the right because you're on your right leg. So if you didn't turn your head left, you'd be looking to the right. So in, because your your spine and pelvis are oriented to the right. So to stay straight, we turn our head left. Well, because of the way the brain and the eyes work, every time you turn your head to the left, your eyes reflexively turn to the right and vice versa. If you turn your eyes to the right, your eyes reflexively turn to the left in order to keep your vision straight. Like that's what I'm doing right now as I look into the camera. Every time I turn my head, my eyes look in the opposite direction. Well, we get stuck in a pattern of our head turned to the left to stay straight and then our eyes, in order to stay straight, have to turn back to the right. So whenever I turn my head, so instead of being like this, which I would be if I'm in a left AIC, right BC, right TMCC pattern, I will turn my head straight so that I can walk straight. Otherwise, I'd be looking this way. But when I do that, my eyes have to turn right. And so that's what he's talking about. I'm, I wouldn't be in the appropriate position. So uh, my orbits... The, the, where the eyeballs are sitting in, the orbits, the bones themselves can get positioned inappropriately 
and the the eyeballs are constantly in one in one position so they can get your vision can get patterned it can be used in a particular patterned way uh, so as long as the rest of the system is in appropriate position they may not be in an appropriate position LASIK is essentially changing the structure of the eye to patch the current subjective visual needs of the patient. That's complicated. But a lot of people's vision gets better as they do a PRI program because they no longer have to use their vision to help stabilize their body. Now, you don't want to necessarily operate, get LASIK, on a patterned visual system that someone is using to help them stabilize their body because that wasn't their true visual system. That was the state that they were in. And now you operate on the state that they were in rather than the real system itself. Um, also, he writes, how, uh, what they need or want for refraction in terms of, well, I like how I like this. It's really, really clear. This is the best. Um, what they need or want for refraction may not always match up to what is best for their visual vestibular system to function properly. Some people get um, nearsighted people. Remember, they have a problem with distance. Sometimes they get too strong of a prescription and it locks them in. Uh, they become too over-focused. And that actually happens quite a lot. Uh, so you know, what they see most clearly with is not what their brain wants in order to um, allow for a relaxed system that can move appropriately. Uh, once the eyeball has been cut, fused, it loses its adaptability and may be more challenging to create lasting change without intervention with lenses, which people who get LASIK are typically trying to avoid. And this is, this is important also. I would liken the situation to putting braces on someone's teeth to give them an optimal bite without addressing neck or cranium position. I know when I was young, they put braces on me. They expand my palate, they put braces on me, and I was already patterned. Uh, I, uh, because I, I'm pretty sure of it, because I can look at pictures. Um, you may end up with a great looking bite, but that great looking bite may now be holding the head and the neck into an undesirable position. So, you know, if you're stuck in this pattern, quite often the jaw will shift to the left or to the right. Left is more common, right is more serious. Uh, and then, actually there was just an article in the newspaper today in the Wall Street Journal about all these people getting braces because of COVID, like they're stuck at home, so like no one's gonna see me, so I might as well get them done. And they mentioned one person who's, she had had unsuccessful braces multiple times and she's gonna do it again. They may be trying to put braces, straighten teeth on a system that's crooked and now the, the, the teeth just get pushed out of place again because the brain is trying to get them back into that position. Um, so if you're over on your right side, it's very often you'll see someone with the jaw that's shifted a little bit to the left. And now their teeth are not going to touch properly. But that the, the teeth aren't the issue. It's the position that they're stuck in. If you now straighten their teeth on a system that's on a, on a jaw that's shifted slightly to the left because of a pattern that they are currently in, you're just locking them into that pattern and the teeth will probably get pushed away again anyway. So it's not going to work in the long term, but you don't want to lock somebody into this pattern. And I think that does actually happen quite often. So in a nutshell, done for the right person who is neutral and stable, neutral and stable is the big word, operative word, which is not going to be people that come in for help with PRI and pain. Uh, for someone who is neutral and stable, there isn't a reason not to, but it should not be taken lightly. So hopefully, uh, if you need to hear that again, listen again, um, take notes if you are one of those people who are, uh, is a candidate for it. Oh, and I would say, I know if you are still considering LASIK, don't get mon, I would, I've heard very bad things. I've worked with one person who had monovision LASIK. So they're doing, you know, one eye for up close and one eye for distance. That's not a good situation from uh, everything that I've heard and the one person I worked with. Uh, she had some of the worst testing I've ever seen, and um, it was almost frightening. So uh, hopefully that will help anyone to understand uh, the role of LASIK surgery and postural restoration and patterns of the body and the eyes.